folks. How you diddling today? No idea what year it is, what month it is, what time it is when you're going to be seeing this video, but it's certainly going to be probably in 2018. But I'm recording this in 2017. In November 2017. But I have to say November has been a bit of a Dyson month for me. And some of you don't like Dysons. So I've not given you all the Dysons I've got this month because you'll be getting Dyson video after Dyson video. So this is why I decided to save this Dyson to 2018. Might be summer, I've got my winter woolly on, but you might be sitting there in shorts, sipping on tequila, who knows what you're doing. But whatever you're doing, you're welcome. And thanks for tuning in. Okay, this is a, as you know, it's a Dyson DC-01 vacuum cleaner. The vacuum that started it all, well not quite, because of course, yeah, it's quite battered the box and I knew it would be. This was really the first sort of mass market Dyson upright vacuum. James Dyson did have that, uh, was it called the Cyclone or Cyclon? The, that pink and brown sort of um, affair. But he sold that initially in Japan. And then I think it was available under the Clean Easy brand or something, but anyway. The DC-01, hence 01, was the first mass market Dyson that you could buy everywhere, and it was everywhere. It was in all the catalogues, of course Argos, and it found its way into the high street, into places like Curry's, Comet. Not sure if Rumbelows were going back then, they might have been. Right, I'll have to carefully take this out. I might keep this box actually. Well, I'm keeping obviously the, the Dyson box, but I'll be keeping this outer box just initially. Now, I will not be getting this dirty, I have to say. I will want to keep this. It's upside down at the lettering. I do want to keep this unused. So I'll show you it, I'll turn it on and etc. I might get hold. There's still plenty of DCO1s about on eBay used, but some in pretty good condition. So, you know, despite the poor state of the box, I want to keep the vacuum unused. Okay, now I think I'm the third person to have this because I believe this was sold by the supplier I buy the vacuums. When I ever say it smells of the farmyard or look at the state of this box or oh heck it's damaged, that's normally come from the farmyard as I call it. I believe this was originally from the farmyard and I think, I don't know if he's a collector, bought it um, and then decided to sell it on so I expect he's made a profit. Do you know what though, I'm going to open these. You know it's very unlikely that I'm going to be selling this but even if I did, the fact that I've opened these isn't going to make a huge difference, is it? I don't think. So these are the original tools you've got. And they, yes, they look grey, but they do actually have a very slight silver fleck. I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up, but that's the crevice tool. The very first Dyson crevice tool. Then we have that, I think that's the same as the DC-04. wonder how long that design lasted. It's quite a nice designed nozzle that. That's for your stairs and upholstery. Little twist action, you've obviously got your litter pickers. Then we've got mm, quite, a, quite a small dusting brush. Now that's got, hmm, isn't that interesting? There's two different Dyson logos. Now this isn't going to be an early DC-01, I don't think, judging by the logo on it. Anyway, this to me, I don't know if we can zoom in on that, but that looks like the older Dyson logo on that dusting brush. And although it's a tiny, tiny dusting brush, it's nice and soft. 
would be probably quite useful. It rotates. But the Dyson logo on the dusting brush doesn't match the Dyson logo on this. But as you just saw me opening it in the same sealed packet, that's how it was packed to the factory. And then there's this adapter piece, which I think you used if you wanted to connect the tools directly to the hose end. So that's those out of the bag. As I said, it's been very poorly stored away. I won't open this packet. I do, I came across for some reason, I've got a Dyson DC01. In fact, it's one I think I bought from Dyson when they were still doing spares. I think I bought a DC01 instruction book for my DC01, DC01 that I had before this long ago now but I bought a second hand DC01 it was this model and it was in very very good condition but I got rid of it so I can look at the instructions I've already got from Dyson that are open so that's those I believe there was a bit of sort of scuffing to the head I'd hopefully it'll wipe off right what's the best way to uh, get this out of the box I don't want to cause any damage because they can get brittle right so that's that's quite heavy all right that's it that's a bit of extra packaging they've put in there now at the bottom it's the wand. And I think that's it. I think you can still buy these genuine Dyson ones. As I expected, I mean, I don't know, the plastic might have gone a bit brittle, so I'm going to be very careful with it. It feels very dusty I've got muck on my hands so before I repack this I'll pack it in some better stuff now hmm I hope that's correct because that doesn't seem to move at the moment I thought that moved but maybe not until it's clicked in I'm no, I don't know so hopefully that's not faulty but there's the wand and the extension tube as well as of course the handle and just like all the other Dysons, upright Dysons since the DCA one this actually fits nests inside the hose at the back of the cleaner right put that to one side it's got a nice uh, again it's very dirty very dusty it's got a round yellow Dyson branded plug now, the seller said it's never been turned on. I can't quite believe that. To be honest, if, if you bought one of these from anywhere, and especially if you were selling it on, you would at least turn it on to check the motor worked, wouldn't you? I'm sure. Right, out it comes. It's got a bit of, um, let's let the hose flop down. This is a bit awkward to empty, as far as I remember. Well, more awkward than a, a newer Dyson. Now, is it? Oh, do you press that down? Yes. Or do you? I can't remember. I know, that's, that's the way you empty it. But can you imagine? When you do that, right? When you take this off to empty, and I'm sure you did leave the cyclone in place, any muck that's actually wrapped around here any dust could just fall down as soon as you take the bin off fall down on top of the cleaner and you'll have to wipe that down it's not very good is it but this particular way of emptying i think this is i think only the dc01 i'm not sure if the dc03 had it i can't know i don't think it did so i think dyson soon realized that's a messy way of emptying but they were new. It's just a dual cyclone now at the moment. Let's move it a bit, a bit closer. So it's hinged at the top. 
There's a little bit of um, elastic band on there that, hold, that was holding the hose up. So we've got the story of the Dyson dual cyclone. So they must have had, of course, a DC-02 Dyson second cleaner. Ah, and look, there's a DC-03 pictured. So obviously this is a later DC-01 if those are pictured here. Oh, there's his first sort of prototype, that one there. Yes, yeah, so it's got the DC-01, DC-02 and DC-03 pictured. And there's uh, this bags clog suction, Dyson, no loss of suction. Nice. Going on about the dual cyclone, etc. All right, let's have a look at the filter, which you had to replace on the DC-01. When Hoover came out with their Vortex model, that was advertised as no filter replacement. So Dyson had to do something about that. Obviously they sued Hoover over the design of the triple Vortex. But um, in my opinion, it was a better machine than this. So under here, I'll have to get some of these just to keep a spare, but you can see it's probably been turned on briefly, but you know, I would expect it to have been turned on, but that wasn't washable. That is sub micro filter S level. Now is that pre or post? That's pre. I think that's the pre motor because the post motor filter is here. But that goes there under the bin. I'm sure a lot of you would have seen many Dyson VC01 videos. So I'm not really showing you anything you haven't seen. Oh, it doesn't click in place. It just goes, uh, just stops down like that. And here is the post. I think it's the post. Or, uh, I don't know. Ease that out. Uh, I don't know if that's ever been pulled out. There we go. Looks like it's the same filter, doesn't it? I think it is the same filter, actually. I've just used exactly the same filter. Yes, I think they have. Is that pre or is that post? Hmm, I'm not sure, to be honest, but anyway. I'm sure some of you will comment underneath and say, well, that's the pre motor, well, that's the post. I'm sure the fan is behind there, so I think that's this is pre, actually, and is that's post, I think. We won't argue over pre and post, will we? Let's pop now, which way did that go in? Because that was rather stiff to, to take out. I wasn't really watching what I was doing, was I? Mm -hmm. See, bits of black are coming off that filter. I might be able to get another one of those. Oh, is that right, Rog? That's probably, oh yes it is, there we are. And we've got a little label here. The world's first bagless vacuum cleaner with 100% suction, 100% of the time. Two S-level electro electrostatic filters. No bag means no bag odour. Clear bin. Instant telescope hose slash wand. Reaches right up to the top of stairs. Automatic safety suction control. Two year guarantee. I do remember though, when these cleaners came out, that most manufacturers would list the suction power on their brochures in air watts. And I always remember seeing these Dyson cleaners and thinking, well, yes, they're claiming they don't lose suction, but according to the air watts, they don't have very much suction to start with. I can't remember the air wattage of this. I think it might be 90 or something. And when, and you could get bagged cleaners that had air watts in the hundreds, you know, over 200. So, the way I thought about these cleaners was, well, yes, they might sustain the 90 air watts, but even a bagged cleaner that's very full would still probably have more suction power. That's how I looked at it when these came onto the market. Of course, I'm from a time when, I remember when bagless cleaners were introduced. A lot of you watching now will only think that bagless cleaners are the main cleaners to get but of course we had bagged vacuum cleaners for many many years before bagless came along cyclonic bagless anyway 
there's the bin again it, this all needs a wipe this needs a, a, a wipe with some water and polish actually before I do anything with it because it is especially what I paid for it I personally I would have um, given it a bit of a polish up but anyway as long as it's not broken I'm not bothered so I did pay a, a fair premium for this but obviously a lot of people were after um, a new DCO one and to me, well, people have said, oh, get a DCO one don't get a DCO one And I, I used to say, well, I've had one, you know. But to get a new one, as an, you know, an example of a Dyson DCO one to have an unused one, I suppose, is a pretty special thing. There will be some others about, but I'm just trying to get this in. I don't think I don't want to force anything. <coughs> There we are, that's in place. So at the back, we've got your wheels, of course. It's nice to see one, often these um, Dysons, you see these CO ones, but they've gone a bit sort of greeny. This gray plastic can often discolor and it does tend to take a, a shade of green, some of the ones I've seen. Here's the hose at the back of the cleaner. One of these stretchy affairs. Yeah, we'll have a look at the rating plate. This has got to be a British made one. I can't see them going to Malaysia before. I don't know when they went to Malaysia actually, but anyway. So I'll just pop the uh, handle into the hose. Sure, it goes that way. Yes, that's the point. I think you had to, you couldn't attach the hose with these to that side, which would make sense, unless that's what that thing's for. That adapter, oh, no, don't think it does. Pretty sure you couldn't with this one, you had to use it by putting the tools onto the end here. Let's see if I can. Yeah, so that's one of the tools on the end, so that's how you'd use it, a bit odd, but. That was the setup. Dyson haven't changed the way that their tools are attached, really, have they? And to be quite frank, although I do like, oops, I do like the way that the hose is integrated very neatly into the design. It's not as quick to grab the hose out and use it as some other cleaners I've had experience of. Right. Yeah, now, I think there is something wrong with this. I might be able to fix it. But to me, you see, I did think there was something wrong with this. Oh, right. Phew. That's it. That's how I expected it to be. It's a long time since I've had my DCO one, but I do remember that that should have moved, and it does now. It was just seized right so when you push it down it should click that's that's it that's the way yeah that's how it should be good there's the on off switch just a little simple hope that works feels a bit odd it should work Okay, let's have a look now at the underside of the cleaner and at the rating plate. So let's have a look then. It's a Dyson DC01 VIN number, I think that says. DC01 STDUK 0007 serial 040A 033960 230, 240 volts, 50 hertz, 1200 max, 1100 watt. NOM for patent information, see operating manual, Dyson Limited, Malsbury, SN16, ORP England UK. Doesn't say made in UK, but I'm pretty sure this Dyson was made in the UK. Here's the underside of the floating cleaner head. There's obviously no height control, so it just floats to adjust to the carpet height. And of course, on this model, there's no clutch. Or separate motor this is just a single motored belt driven there will be a belt 
I must get some spare belts actually, spare belts and filters before they're not available or hard to get, just to keep as spares. Not that I'm going to use this. That's a little bit sharp there, that sole plate. So it adjusts, so the whole thing moves up and down, but that sole plate also adjusts itself. There's the brush roll, and as I'm sure quite a lot of enthusiasts and collectors may agree that Dyson, although they spent a long time perfecting a bagless aspect to their vacuums, they weren't always the best at cleaning. They could have taken a few tips from Hoover and other manufacturers when it came to agitation, because that, you know, it's not as bad as some brush rolls, but the brushes are pretty soft. Pretty sparse, aren't they? And as far as edge cleaning goes, well, mm, don't think it would. Don't think it'd reach that close to the edge, would it? There, look. Let's see where the brushes stop. And you'll have the line of shame produced by that bit there, where the obviously where the belt is. Well, I've polished up the old girl. It looks a lot better than it did. I've just wiped it down and given it a bit of a buff with car polish so that is certainly in a better state than it was there is some scuffing to the cleaner head you probably just here you probably can't see it on the video that was mentioned in the listing i'm not too bothered about that so i'm going to plug it in i don't know if it's going to turn on no okay Let's switch this on and it's not for the first time it's definitely been switched on because when I was clear cleaning out the bin there was evidence of a little bit of dirt in there so not quite totally virginal now but anyway let's see if it works <laughs> Now, I think it's making that noise because it's in the upright position and it's hopefully diverting the suction. I think the suction diverts through the hose when you pull the hose off. But it was definitely sounding blocked. I don't really want to... Oh, heck. Oh, to heck with it. I'm going to run it over this fairly clean carpet. You know, as I said earlier, I'm very unlikely to sell this. And even if I did sell it, it would be cleaned up to this standard. It's not going to be used, really. So it will virtually be unused. But it's, as I said, unlikely I'll part with this. What will mostly happen to my collection if I die without leaving any, any sort of a will, they'll all end up in landfill, dumped into a skip. So at least we've got the video, haven't we? I'm going to use it, folks. So there you go, I didn't think I'd be pushing this over a carpet, but what the heck, you know? What's the point in collecting something if you just look at them? I know some things you don't really want to use, but I enjoyed that. I'm not regretting, I'm not regretting a moment of that and I hope you enjoyed seeing it. This area was pretty clean anyway. So it's not like, I'm not going to be, <laughs> I'm not going to be chucking loads of muck down, of course. I will not be doing a bag of filth demo with this. This is probably all you're going to see of this machine. Apart from it will feature when I get all my Dysons together in a video. I might have already done that by now, I don't know. But that's really going to be it. The belt seemed okay, actually. 
but considering I don't know if we can quite see in there look now I don't want to use this anymore because the first thing of course that will show signs of use is this bin I've coated it in wax anyway inside and out some car wax polish so I'll empty that polish it back up and it will go back in its box and this is one cleaner that will never be stored in the loft or it will not be stored in a garage either there's certain vacuums that I always will store indoors even if it's in the back of a built-in cupboard or something I don't really want to expose this to any damp or extreme heat or extreme cold but there you go pretty pleased all in all with this Dyson DC01 it's not an early model they must have made thousands and thousands of these but to have practically a new one more or less as new as it would have been when it was originally bought um, I'm pretty pleased if you have any comments about this vacuum or vacuums in particular, whatever, please comment below and I'll see you next time for another video. So until then, it's bye from me and thanks for watching.